This is how the world's first synthetic organ was made, dipping a glass mould into a liquid polymer, which set to create an exact copy of the patient's windpipe. It was created in these labs at the Royal Free Hospital in London, and then flown to Sweden. Once in Stockholm, the synthetic windpipe was bathed in a solution of stem cells taken from the patient's bone marrow. After just two days, the millions of tiny holes in its surface were seeded by cells. A synthetic body part had become the patient's own. And here it is in the operating theatre, being cut to size moments before being transplanted. The ability to create a 3D synthetic organ is a significant moment in this field of surgery. This technique does not rely at all on a human donation. Um, you can have it immediately. There is no delay and most important, since it is a regenerative approach, you still do not need any immunosuppression. The patient who's being discharged tomorrow knows that without the transplant he would have died. His voice is still recovering. I was very much scared, very much scared, but basically the difference is between living and non-living. So what next? Well, just look at this. It's a one meter long synthetic artery made in this machine in London in just 20 minutes. It's one of many body parts the scientists say they can now create at will. We make heart valve, we make a bigger diameter for in the aorta. And we're not just stopping there, we're moving to an other part of the body. We make an ear, nose, a skin, and so on. Ease it off. This material does have limits. It can't be used to create complex organs like the heart, liver, or kidney. But scientists hope it points the way to more transplants without the wait for a donor. Fergus Walsh, BBC News.